Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're actually checking out a brand that is quite familiar. It is the Skytech $900 gaming PC from Best Buy. Best Buy has some decent deals right now on gaming PCs and gaming laptops. And we wanted to showcase one of those deals by taking a look at this Skytech gaming PC, which we have not had the opportunity to take a look at here on the channel. But before we dive into this thing, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by our favorite place, GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you wanna get the best discount of the year, they have the Christmas sale going on. Use code TV20 to get 30% off. So we definitely recommend doing that. All you have to do is pay for it and then you take that activation link, plug it into Windows and boom, you have a fully legit activated Windows license. And it's ready to upgrade to Windows 11 for those out there looking to upgrade. So if you guys wanna pick up Windows 10 keys or even Microsoft Office keys, the same discount applies to TV20. Check the link in the description down below. And special thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. So budget gaming PCs are really hard to come by in 2021 going into 2022. If you go to a place like Best Buy, you're mostly going to find really high-end i buy power, cyber power type PCs that have new RTX and new RX cards. And they typically aren't the greatest price right now because well, everybody's buying them up. So finding a PC for under $1,000 that has decent specs, well, this could be a really good video or we might find that the PC is pretty average and you should just check out PC Bros. Tech. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is open this thing up, see what it looks like and dive into some benchmarking open time the blaze 2 the blaze 2 so yeah we haven't actually gotten to check out a skytech pc yet um they were really familiar on is it new or amazon uh both we always used to, yeah, we always used to see them on one of those sites and they've appeared in best buy now so i guess that means they've made it they've made um, it they finally have gotten there so Right off the gate, I see that we have Wi-Fi, two really big Wi-Fi antennas. That's definitely a plus. We have a nice little power cord. Is this a keyboard and mouse? What's that? Um, we get the full huh? setup here? I think, don't they have their own peripherals? They do have some branded peripherals. Yeah. So we actually have a really nice looking mouse actually. Um, and it is Skytick, it's the M1000. It actually has a braided cable. Um, you can see it's like a matte finish. We have a DPI switch. We have two macros in the size. So that's kind of cool. Dude, I swear to God, this is a mechanical keyboard. I'm freaking, I'm throwing this PC. You're throwing it away. Yep, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be mad because I'm just gonna be like, how? How you guys afford this? But we do have a keyboard here and it's a full-size keyboard. It says laser engraving. I feel like it's membrane. The, it, branding's, it, it, the branding's too weird. Death membrane. Yeah, and that's a big keyboard. Yeah, definitely membrane. Uh, it does have like RGB backlighting, a braided cable that actually matches. Um, I mean, it's a nice looking keyboard. It's actually metal on the back, which is kind of interesting. Normally you're just gonna see plastic for this price. So they've definitely seems like they've included some decent peripherals at this price. Um, it makes the $900 feel a little bit better because the specs are like, they're, they're good. I mean, we're talking a 1650 with an i3-10100F. Um, it's something that, you know, we could probably do for around the same price, but with that keyboard and mouse, I mean, that is kind of pushing it. So I'm impressed that they included those um, with the price. Oh God, <laughs> we're falling apart. Things are falling all over the place. So let's see what kind of stuff they include here. Real nice quick. folder. They, they include a troubleshooting guide that's like a cause and effect chart. So that's kind of cool. Um, quality control certificate. That's, we actually do these too. And we really like this. You get actual handwriting on it to know that everything's working good. I like the seal of approval. Oh yeah, Sky to quality control. Uh, we got a little business card here, customer support, maintenance guide. Is this actually someone's personal? No, it's just customer support. I was wondering if we actually get like the business card of the person who built it. Okay, so that's nice. Got a little little pamphlet folder. Uh, they included a hard drive bay on top. Kind of weird. I'm assuming to hide cables inside of there. This actually has a sheath on it. I mean, this is, they do a good, good presentation. job. Yeah, good presentation. Good job in the packaging. Like nothing to complain about so far there. It got a little bit wobbly. I was kind of scared it was going to fall over. Definitely a small tower. Um, it's about the size of like a uh, HP tower. That's a big warning right there. Yeah, that is a big <laughs> warning. They actually do use the expanding packaging. One thing I did notice off the gate, this isn't a big deal, but we did not actually get the side panel on all the way. Um, that's just, this is something that like from building computers for years that we just notice right away. They do this uh, for you scrubs out there, you know, who want to try to plug straight into the motherboard. So we are going to have to remove this, but this is basically letting you know, hey, there's a graphics card installed. You need to plug it into there. Oh man. Oh gosh. The, the sticker is not great. Peel not satisfying, oh. but I do like that this board actually has built in Wi-Fi. I'm not a big fan when companies just include a Wi-Fi adapter um, when they can just spend a little bit more and get like a nice board that actually has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. But as far as the 
far into the case goes, we have these two RGB fans up here. They're probably proprietary, but we'll check on that LED button, power button. We have uh, power LED, hard drive LED. We have actual dual combo jacks up front, which is good to have. USB 3, two USB 2s. Um, the motherboards are probably gonna change. I can already tell us if it can go on this power supply just by yeah, looking is, at it. Yeah. Um, that is one thing that like um, almost all these companies do to just be a little bit cheaper is they do use pretty low rated uh, like 80 plus, usually not even bronze, but we'll see. This one could be, but they just, they love Gomdius. Uh, they're not bad power supplies. Like we never really had one go bad. They're just, they're definitely not highly rated. But uh, one. Yep. yeah, so we're not going to do this. I'm no follow up. Now we looked at the instructions. We, I think, I think we're certified to be able to just to dive into this, right? Like we're, we're good to go. We kind of know what we're doing. All right, we ready? Pull. Oh, we have a tower cooler. Okay, so we do have an 80 plus bronze. It's the Gomdius Kratos M1 B550, or sorry, 550B. It's non-modular. It's just full, um, you know, connectors, balls to the wall, and there's not much way to hide anything. This is why they removed the hard drive cage. You can see all the cables in there. I get it. You know, we do that sometimes when we use a case that doesn't have a power supply basement. Uh, we actually do have two sticks of RAM, and it looks like... It's XPG, XPG Gaming, 3200 megahertz, dual channel. That's really good on them for doing that. Uh, we have like a, almost like a H212 style cooler. Mm -hmm. They didn't really have any branding on it. It actually has, what does that say? Cooler one, it says cooler one. Hmm. So that's the brand, I guess. It actually has an MSI 1650, four gigs. So it's not like a weird, you know, like proprietary one. So you could transfer between builds, does not use external power. So that's always nice. We clearly have a 500 gig, two and a half inch drive, which, you know, that knocks off a little bit of points in my opinion, because I'd rather use an M.2, but all good. It's still gonna work the same. Let's go ahead and open the back up and see what we got here for kill management. They, they do not want you to take that panel off, man. That's no. scary. They, and then they, when they screw it on tight, you're just like, hmm. Is the cable to, management suspect? Y'all trying to hide something? Yeah, is it a sussy, sussy cable management? Oh, hold on. Oh, wow, that's good. Dude, do they know we were buying that's this? That's some premium <laughs> cable management right there. Okay, so just like we were saying, uh, yeah, clearly it does use proprietary um, RGB, but it does have connectors for more, but I've never, ever seen this connector that's before. That's a weird connector. Yeah, so keep in mind, like, if you do want to add more RGB, you really can't unless you just add, like, a whole other hub. Um, we do have a Western Digital 500 gig blue SSD and uh, yeah, de really decent cable management. Like, I cannot complain about that. Can't really get much better than that. So, um, yeah, you wanna go ahead and let's power yeah, it on. See what that RGB looks like. Make There's sure a peel it actually on the front too. works okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that off for the video. Show the show the audience what this thing really looks like. Let it shine. It, oh, oh, you already have some issues here. Um, Sorry, something up front <laughs> is causing problems. Is the cable in it? They really, I, I noticed the cable management was like really close to the left side, so it might be, or it's a bad fan. I think it might be a bad fan because I'm noticing when I push on it. I mean, yeah, there's no cable, like, unless you see something. No. All right, so, yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's a little bit better now. But we may have to replace a fan here. Yeah, because I'm not seeing an actual cable inside of it. Um, I would almost bet you one way that we can fix it is just by like loosening one of the screws. That's literally what fixed it. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why that that is a thing, but sometimes these really cheap fans, uh, the the shrouds are all plastic. There's no metal in these fans, so that plastic, you'd be tightening it too much, can warp and cause that noise. And I would assume that they tested this from the factory. A little bit weird that it got through like that, but who knows? So it does this actually? I think is ARGB because I noticed there's an ARGB connector mm -hmm. here. It's just not. And all this is though. not. Yeah, it's not changing with. Is that the, really all it can do? Is it only pulse? Oh, oh that's... That's something. Good yeah. Um, yeah. Power okay. supply is on its own. I'm curious, so I think this... Yeah, this might be motherboard controlled. Um, that's something we'd have to... Oh, no, it is. I see the... It's that's what this is. You see uh, this connector okay. is just running like all the way down. So that's the ARGB connector. It must have not been long enough to run behind the board. That's my only assumption. Or we got a, we got a rookie cable manager here. Oh, they did a really good job in the back. This actually is. Is this RGB? Like, can I change it? I think you, yep. Look at that. RGB power so supply. So extra, but this is like the one time Where you that it kind of makes yeah. sense. Although, it's it not really ideal should, it for should be flipped flow. upside down, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's not ideal for yeah, airflow. Because this does, so that's another thing we'll point out. Once again, it's such a small deal. Like I don't want people like not buying because of this, but really this power supply is to be upside down so that you have your, your air entering here and then exhausting out the back and it keeps the power supply heat separate from the rest of the build. Because right now, it's basically gonna be 
uh, pulling in. Yeah, yeah it's it, you just don't really want it like that. That's why you'll notice every build ever, the power supply is gonna be upside down. So like we said, it's not a big deal. It might cause like a one degree Celsius difference, but I think it's pretty much time that we go ahead and plug this in. It's supposed to have Windows 10 Home installed, tested and activated. So we'll check that, start downloading games. We'll let you guys know if there's any hiccups along the way. If not, we'll just go ahead and play some games. All right, guys, now that we have this SkyTech PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple of benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to this PC in a couple of titles, those being Halo Infinite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, and Borderlands 3. First up in Halo Infinite, a game that is really blowing up right now, 1080p on low settings, we averaged about 60 FPS. There were definitely some stutters here, and the 1650 is the clear bottleneck in this system when it comes to games like Halo Infinite that are more GPU-bound. The i 3 100 in our opinion can handle up to like an RX 6600 maybe 3060 level card 3060 is stretching it a little bit but it can handle a higher end GPU so there is some upgradability here without having to upgrade the CPU but Halo Infinite is a pretty demanding game and hence why we had to run at 1080p low and we did get 60 FPS but there were some stutters here and there a little bit below 60 making it a okay gaming experience but not absolutely the greatest. Now there's no real fault with the hardware in this system, the configuration is just a 1080p medium low settings gaming PC when you're playing new AAA titles, because as you can see in Apex Legends at 1080p on medium settings, we got 80 plus FPS. Running low or pro settings would probably yield a 100 plus FPS experience close to high refresh rate, and you won't have any problems having a really smooth gaming experience with no stutters. The 16 gigs of RAM really does help the system out here, I'm very happy to see that SkyTech opted for 16 gigs, and now went for the cheaper option of putting 8 gigs in this thing because most modern games benefit from 16 gigs nowadays especially in these mid-range systems so very good to see that from SkyTech and Apex Legends, Fortnite, Valorant all those games will have no problems getting over 60 FPS and on performance modes you could probably get a high refresh rate gaming experience at 100 plus FPS at 1080p. Now Warzone is a game I bet a lot of you want to play on this PC, and I'll be honest, it is definitely playable, but you do have to run pretty much all low settings at 1080p to get 60-ish FPS. There are a few dips below 60, but for the most part when you're out in an open world, you'll get 60 to 70 FPS, very light stutters here and there, and it is a playable experience. Um, so if you are looking to dive into Warzone, this PC would work fine, and you can upgrade in the future to a newer GPU and have no problems playing a game like Warzone or any new battle royale that's out there on the market. And last but certainly not least is Borderlands 3, which is our AAA benchmark of choice. At 1080p on medium settings using the built-in benchmark, we averaged exactly 60 FPS. So that just goes to show this is a perfect 1080p medium low settings gaming PC. Esports titles you could run performance mode no matter what and get 100 plus FPS high refresh rate experience. But we're new to this. But we're not new to this. The 1650 and i3 is a configuration even before the market went to total crap that we used a lot and it works really well together. It's a PC that can play esports titles and also stretch into some other games when you do upgrade in the future. But uh, yeah, SkyTech has a reasonable PC here. The pricing isn't great, don't get me wrong, but that's the pricing that's going on in this market right now. As someone who runs a PC selling business, I do understand what they're having to pay for these GPUs and CPUs. So the pricing isn't as bad as you might think it is um, they're just trying to make their margins so let me know down below what you think of this pc if you think it's a total piece of garbage let me know down below as well but if you want to pick this thing up we'll obviously leave links to best buy and also a bunch of other SkyTech pcs that you can buy from best buy um, they will be affiliate links and they will help us out so yeah let's bring jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick Looking for an awesome case for your next gaming PC? Then look no further than the Antec DF700 Flux, featuring their Flux cooling solution, a 3D mesh front panel, built-in ARGB fans and controller, along with support for up to 9 fans for maximum cooling. Take your PC build to the next level with the Antec DF700 Flux by checking the link in the description down below, and special thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Alright guys, so we've been down this road many times as far as benchmarking the i3-2100F and 1650 goes. It's just, it's a really good pair because they're both very budget, being around like the $100 mark for the CPU and around the $250 mark for the 1650, so it is a really well-built PC, and in gaming, I mean, it plays pretty much everything you throw at it. And then i3 gives you a little bit of wiggle room to upgrade in the future, and this looks like a standard system, so in terms of upgradability, you can upgrade to probably like an i5-10400 really easily, slap in like a 3060 if you wanted to, the wattage of the power supply is decent enough to support something like that, so there is some upgradability here, but overall, it's a pretty good PC, it works out 
of the gate, we can't say that much about a bunch of PCs who take a little gas. Sometimes they don't really even work, but Skytech has a working PC here. And if you want to pick this up along with some other PCs we recommend for Best Buy, link in the description down below, the affiliate links, and it does help us out. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toaster Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And hey, we love checking out other pre-builds, but we also have our own pre-build company, PCBros.Tech. PCBros.Tech is our PC selling business where we sell PCs that we feature here on the channel, especially this one. This one's gonna be for sale. It might be gone already by the time you watch this video, but we will be listing stuff as we film it. So check out our website and come in person. PCBros.Tech, see you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.